Okay, so good evening everyone. Um, my name is Nikki McLeod. I am the BVNA, British Veterinary Nursing Association's Central Scotland representative. Um, greetings from a sunny Scotland and I'm sitting in the car park, but needs must. Um, so I'm joined tonight by Sapphire from Pet Blood Bank, uh, who is very kindly uh, offered to speak to us about the work that Pet Blood Bank do and how you as a dog owner or cat owner um, can get involved and uh, either by, with your dog or cat or by yourself as well. Um, and I'm sure that uh, Sapphire will tell us more about that in just a second. We're just waiting for numbers coming in. Um, we are also live on Facebook this evening uh, on the British Veterinary Nursing Association's website, uh, Facebook page, which is called Veterinary Nursing Awareness Month. Um, this is where myself as a registered veterinary nurse and other veterinary nurses are sharing everything that we can do uh, in the veterinary nursing profession. Uh, so our numbers are coming in. So we're just waiting on a couple of more numbers and then I'll introduce you to Sapphire and we'll hand over. Okay, so, so just some more quick introductions and then I'll hand over to Sapphire. So as I say, my name is Nikki McLeod. I am regional representative for Scotland for BVNA, but I'm also a phlebotomist for Pet Blood Bank and I'm also a regional coordinator for Scotland. So I organise the Scottish team uh, for Pet Blood Bank. Uh, Sapphire is Pet Blood Bank's donor su supervisor. She's worked for Pet Blood Bank since 2018, supporting the administration team. And previously to working for Pet Blood Bank, Sapphire worked in the rescue sector and has experience in animal welfare and management. And as I say, we are streaming this live. Please share this with colleagues and friends, anybody that has dogs and cats uh, that may be interested. And now I'm just going to hand over to Sapphire and it's over to you now, Safa. Thank you, Nikki. Okay, so I'll just get the presentation up. Okay, so we've got a presentation to talk to you about Pet Blood Bank. And these are sort of the main points. So who we are, what we do, why we do it, our donors working with us and any questions at the end. Uh, so Pet Blood Bank was launched in 2007 and it's currently the only charity in the UK that provides blood for uh, the Canine Blood Bank. At the minute, it is just dogs that we provide blood products for, um, but later in the presentation, I'll explain a bit more about extending that to other animals as well. Um, our aim is to advance animal health and welfare and relieve suffering by providing quick and convenient access to blood. Um, so it's a voluntary scheme, just like the human blood service. So dogs from all over the country give blood at our sessions. Um, so we do sessions in Scotland and all the way down. So I think the furthest south we go is probably Somerset at the moment. And we've recently um, started a session in Wales. So we are extending quite far and wide over the UK. Uh, so dogs come along to our sessions, donate the blood, and then it comes back to Loughborough and it's processed by our lab processor there. The blood is processed and separated into red blood cells and plasma products, and that is ready to dispatch to vets 24-7, 365 days. Uh, we are on call, ready to get it out as soon as possible. And every dog that donates makes a massive difference to us as each unit of blood has a potential to save up to four dogs' lives. So even if a dog uh, is a donor for a short time, every full unit uh, can make a massive difference. And blood transfusions can help save a pet's life. Uh, so some statistics here for you then. So we've got more than four, uh, 5,000 now active donors registered. So uh, these are dogs that are uh, current active donors that come along um, every sort of eight weeks, uh, a maximum of six times a year to donate blood for us. 
We run about seven to 10 sessions per week across the UK. And last year we collected over 3000 units of blood and dispatched over 5000 blood products. And as I previously said, we provide a 24 hour service to the vets. Um, so we have a dedicated out of hours team that work through the night. So if we do get a call from a vets needing some blood products straight away, then we will get that sorted. Uh, so why would a dog need to give blood then? So this is a bit more clinical. Um, so um, blood is the only part of the body that can carry oxygen, which is essential for life. Um, it contains numerous other cells and proteins that perform life preserving functions such as fighting infections, clotting blood and assuring the volume of liquid in the circulation is large enough to support all the organs at once. So blood loss due to trauma or major surgery, ruptured internal tumours or ulcers, anemia, um, received vital blood clotting components following toxin ingestion um, and provide other specialised plasma components that can become dangerously ill um, due to a medical condition. Um, Nikki being clinical, I think you can uh, concur with this. It's, it's important for all of these things. Absolutely. Um, it's part of the job, definitely. So the donor criteria then for dogs that want to, uh, for the owners to think about uh, putting their dogs forward. So mainly fit and healthy, and um, they do have to be, be between one and eight years old uh, and weigh more than 25 kilograms. Um, so that's quite important. So if dogs are just less than 25, unfortunately they can't donate for us it's due to the amount of blood that we do take, which is roughly about a pint. And um, so they do have to be that key 25 kilograms or over. Have a good, generally relaxed, but confident temperament. So confidence is very important. Dogs that come along to our sessions, they, especially the first time they're meeting people, they don't really know. It can be a clinical environment as well. So they've got to be pretty confident with meeting people they're unfamiliar with and a different new environment perhaps than they're used to. Um, they do have to be from the UK or Ireland at the moment. Um, so dogs that have been imported or travelled abroad, unfortunately can't donate for us. And um, preferably update with vaccinations, um, but that isn't compulsory and not on any medication. Uh, we want dogs that are on medication to be able to get fit and well um, and so not be a donor at that time. Um, so all of those things are very important and when um, you speak to a member of the donor admin team when discussing the criteria to come along, we do go through an assessment, uh, which is probably takes about 10 minutes, but talking about um, your dog's temperament, how they would cope with being a donor um, and be able to help guide you and whether we think your dog would be able to be a donor or not. Um, so easy way to register if, you, if your dog fits all of the criteria, you can visit the website. Um, it's a really easy process. Um, so you can see from the slides there, so you can register using an online form. And then that comes through to the admin team and we will then add you to our database and get in touch when we're in your area. Um, so then we will let you know where we're going um, and go through the assessment and then get you booked in. So it, sessions are appointment based. Um, so we'll give you a time and on all the instructions on what to do when you get there. So you can meet our friendly collection team. So the donation process. So appointments generally last about 45 minutes. Um, there's between 10 and 15 minutes in the pre-donation, having a veterinary health check, um, having a chat with the vet about clinical history and pre-screen blood tests and treats and fuss. Um, and then 10 to 15 minutes in the donation rooms, that approximately takes between five and 10 minutes to donate, 450 mils. So the actual part of donating, the blood is fairly quick, depending on the flow of the donor. Um, and then 15 minutes in post donation, just to make sure that everything is fine. Lots more fuss, lots more treats, if that's okay for your dog to have. Um, and at the end of it all, the donors receive a goodie bag. Um, they get a lovely red lifesaver bandana and a photo taken for our Facebook page. And uh, so it's really lovely, the whole process from start to finish. Um, 
at the moment, due to socially distance um, procedures in place, our owners are waiting outside, um, but normally the owner would be there from start to finish the whole way through. So we've got a short video here just to show you a visual on what happens. Okay, so a nice visual there for you to see what happens on the day. Uh, so this is talking about uh, blood types. So dogs like us have different blood types. Um, the most significant, significant type is DEA1, and dogs can either be positive or negative for this type. Um, only 30% of dogs are DEA1 negative. And this type can be given to both positive and negative dogs. Um, so 30% out of the dog population are likely to be negative. So that means we've got a very small uh, pool for us to be able to tap into to ensure that we are able to provide enough negative blood to the vets. So it's important for us that we are campaigning regularly to get these types of dogs enrolled. Um, if the vets, when they call us and it is an emergency, haven't the resources or the time to blood type, a negative uh, patch red blood cells can go to either do a, a negative or a positive dog. So it is important that we have enough negative donors registered with us and donating regularly. Um, so that 
the breeds that are likely to be negative are Airedale Terriers, American Bulldogs, Border Collies, Boxers, Dobermans, Dog to Bordeaux, English Bull Terriers, Flat Coats, German Shepherds, Greyhounds, Lurchers, Old English Sheepdogs, Pointers and Weimaraners, um, and even crosses of those as well can uh, type as negative. Uh, so what we do, um, once the unit comes back to the lab, it's blood typed, so we know uh, which blood type the donor is, and the admin team will then write to you and let you know what type, blood type your dog is, and also the results of um, a blood screen that your dog will have for the first time. Um, so we'll send you a typing card that will let you know, and this information also goes to your own registered vet, so it's um, recorded on your dog's um, profile there, so they know exactly uh, what blood type your dog is. Um, so depending on whether your dog is a positive or a negative depends on how often we call um, to get you booked in, but more than very often really negatives are almost always uh, invited to every session just because the demand is there for us to provide the negative blood. So we'll, we'll invite you up to six times a year. Donor welfare is always uh, a priority without exception. Um, this is very clear uh, working with the collection teams that welfare is always a massive part of the whole donation process. Um, the dogs cannot verbalise their consent, so the collection team will observe them very closely for behavioural indicators um, to show that they're happy and compliant with the process. Uh, the donors all the way through are scored on behaviour, compliance and anxiety throughout the process. And these scores are recorded on the paperwork, uh, but are also used to de determine if a dog can continue to donate or should be retired. So if at any point in the process of donating, um, the dog is not happy, the collection team will just stop. Um, they like to make it a very positive experience. So if stopping and uh, bringing the dog back out to you uh, is better for the dog and then maybe inviting you back again to try again, then that's what will happen. Um, there's no chemical restraints, um, no sedation, literally just gentle pressure and positive reinforcement with the treats and fuss to ensure that the dog remain uh, nice and still on the table during the donation. Um, they apply a local anaesthetic cream to minimise any discomfort from the placement of the needle. And sometimes extra cream is added at the end, depending if the dog's got sensitive skin, um, but they will always make sure that they look after the dog with that. Uh, whilst the need for blood is great, the need to safeguard the welfare of our donors is greater. And the collection team are really well trained and very experienced to recognise any subtle signs of anxiety. Um, and it's sometimes... A couple of times a donor might be a little bit unsure, but then from the third time, the fourth time and onwards, they generally get a bit more confident, are quite happy and know the process, recognise the team when they go. Um, and if it's not for your dog, then that's absolutely fine as well. Um, even just give, giving it a go is, is absolutely amazing. Uh, so often donors are unfamiliar with some of the elements of the donation process and need a little time or help. Um, so the team can often tell early on if the dog has the right character to be a successful donor. Um, so we can send you training sheets out to help you look at clipper training, uh, being gently restrained on their side and being lifted onto a table. Being lifted onto a table we know can be a bit tricky to practice that, especially if the dogs are quite heavy. So we're talking like dogs that are over sort of 50k, but laying on their side and generally laying still up for up to about 10 minutes is um, one thing that we're trying to encourage. Um, so donors can return a couple of times if the owner wishes and we track all the scores to see if there's improvement. Um, and this is all recorded on the dog's records back in the office as well so that we can see, make sure the dog is nice and happy. Um, and dogs are retired with our gratitude when they are no longer able to donate. So either it could be that they've just had enough and it's no longer for them anymore, or when they reach the age of nine, we do retire the dog um, and they get a nice retirement gift and a certificate to say thank you for all of the units of blood that they've donated. And we do have a donor recognition scheme um, 
just a, a token of, of uh, appreciation. And this is based on uh, visits. Um, so if you come along and even if your dog doesn't manage to make a full donation, we will still um, go through the, the recognition scheme here. So the first donation, if they make, get a full unit for there, they get a lifesaver bandana and a collar and a tag. Um, and that's where we will then send you the letter with all the information about the blood type um, and you get a car sticker as well. Second visit, you get a nice little uh, shopper bag. Fifth, um, a really nice red I'm a lifesaver lead. Tenth visit, quite a fancy water bottle for the dog. Fifteenth is a really nice hand painted um, ceramic bowl. Twentieth is a photo frame and the 25th is a hand-painted ceramic treat jar um, and we do have quite a few donors that do reach the 25 so it's absolutely amazing to see that so many visits and so many units and so many lives saved as well so it's, it's just a little uh, token of our appreciation and on retirement um, the dog if it's reached a certain amount of visits can receive a hamper so I have two sizes of those it's got some nice little goodies in there um, and then also on these milestones they receive uh, a little iron or stitch on badge for the bandanas with each milestone on. Uh, so why is it important uh, for your dog to be a donor if they can? Um, so here this talks about Toby and Wendy are two dogs who discovered the importance of blood being readily available. Uh, Toby on the right needed blood after the walls of his intestines burst and faecal matter leaked all over his organs. Uh, just a year before, Toby and Fern and Luke saw the dog Wendy uh, needed a transfusion after she ate something containing poison. In both of these cases, the blood was life-saving for the dogs and they both made a full recovery and are back enjoying life with their two or the dog, dog siblings. Um, and the owner Fern said, Pet Blood Bank has helped to save our family twice. We want to say a huge heartfelt thank you to the donors and their humans for everything they do. Our family wouldn't be complete without their help. We couldn't be more grateful. And uh, we do receive lots of really wonderful, hot, warming stories about the recipients of the products that we send out. And it uh, sometimes does bring a tear to your eye. It's very lovely. Uh, so a picture of before there. and after. Uh, so lots of people don't realise that dogs can give blood and the demand is outstripping supply. Um, so as we always uh, keep enough blood products in stock for emergencies, um, but we need to keep that stock um, enough in there to meet the demand. So as a relatively young charity, we rely on the generosity of others to help us grow through helping us spread the word, fundraising, registering your own dog to become a donor or recommending us to a friend and volunteering at a donation session as well. Um, so word of mouth is uh, works the best really. Um, if even if your dog can't donate because it doesn't meet the criteria, spreading the word for us with others um, to people that have got dogs that fit the criteria is absolutely amazing. Um, so that's it really does work. And every drop counts both in blood and funds. Um, so we are a registered charity. It is non-profit. Um, we, so any kind of fundraising and we're looking at our social media pages, seeing what campaigns we're running um, is amazing if you can support us in that way. Uh, volunteering. Um, so we've just started up volunteers coming back to the session again. They are a massive help to our collection teams. 
always make the sessions run a lot more smoother. Uh, they fill a vital and rewarding role um, at our collection sessions. It's very hands on with the dogs and my volunteers that come along really enjoy the day. Um, so there is a registration process on the website if you did want to volunteer for us um, with a little bit of training as well. So the main uh, parts of volunteering is uh, greeting the owners and the donors, um, get to fuss lots of lovely dogs and chat to, to the owners, um, weighing the dogs so helping the collection team with weighing the dog and making sure they are the correct weight for, this, for the donation assist the donor owners with completion of uh, session paperwork so making sure all the boxes are filled in and it's all um, completed with signatures and everything fuss and feed the donors post donation and hand out milestone awards and the goodie bags at the end and uh, book the donor in for the next session um, so you can visit the website to register as a volunteer and see what it involves uh, so Pet Blood Bank also provides a process and service to vets that collect alpaca blood. Um, so the blood is separated into red cells and plasma by our lab team and returned to the practice. The plasma is transfused to CREA to boost their immunity and the plasma is returned to the animals from the same herd it was collected from. And um, we're busy with the service right now. I think there's a certain time uh, when alpacas give birth and we do know that it's very successful and um, it gets lots of uh, lovely photos of creas that have made it due to this process so our lab team not only process blood uh, dogs blood products but alpacas as well uh, so what is next for us so as well as um, mainly dogs and a little bit of alpacas that we do as well we're looking into cats um, so providing the service for felines. Um, they have three blood types, but unlike dogs, cats must always receive blood of the exact same type. Uh, transfusion is given for the same reasons as dogs. Uh, access to feline blood is much more difficult to achieve for vets. Um, so extending our ability to save the lives of cats is very important to us and is under development currently. Um, as any cat owner will know, a very uh, different approach is required, but with no less emphasis on donor welfare. I think there is a registration process at the moment. Um, if you think your cat would be an ideal donor, you can register. But all of this work is, is going on in the background to try and get that started. And uh, this lovely slide is photographs of all of our wonderful lifesavers. And there's many, many more. Uh, the, the Pet Blood Bank Facebook page has folders of every session with all of the smiley faces that you can see there. Um, and they're added to Facebook every week. OK, so I think that is it. So it's open for any questions. Excellent, Sapphire. Thank you very much for that. Um, we have one question just now. Uh, it does say, are you taking on any volunteers just now? And if so, how can you register your interest? Yep, so that's just on the uh, website. It's quite easy to navigate. The web website's been updated fairly recently. Um, so you can just click on there, fill in an application, and that'll come through to the admin team. And so our host venue coordinator, who looks after our volunteers, will be in touch to chat through the process, have a look at what sessions um, we do in your area so that you don't have to travel too far, um, and start the process from there. That's great. And what I've done is I've put the link into uh, the chat box uh, to, for volunteering um, and also lots of other information on the website as well. Um, another question is, does it matter about the age of your dog? Uh, yes, yeah, so they do have to be at least one year old and make their first donation before their eighth birthday. Um, so as long as they're between there, that's absolutely fine. Uh, with our giant breeds, um, we do look to make sure that they are fully mature. So sometimes um, the collection team will ask for them to be between 18 months and two, um, and they are retired from the programme at nine. 
as a phlebotomist myself, I can definitely say under one, they're just too happy. They just wouldn't lie still for long enough as well. So it's there's lots of good reasons why it's over one as well. Um, another uh, question, uh, has there been any side effects after a dog has given blood? There's not really many that I know. I mean, obviously you're clinical and you see them at the session, so you probably could answer this better, but I think mm -hmm. there's a, maybe a little bit of fatigue uh, but they're, they're watched over so closely. And if there's any concerns after the donation session, um, you can contact us in, in the office and we will happily go through whatever's happening with your dog. But the one thing that we would always say, if there was any concerns after donating, just get your dog straight to your registered vet and we can deal with everything else after. But do you want to add anything to that, Nikki? Yeah. Ah, uh, sure. Um, we do closely. We don't put them straight out the door after a donation. We closely monitor them on the table straight after we take a donation. Um, once we've got them off the table, uh, once all the signs are good, we're watching them again. And uh, even when we're taking things like the photograph or Facebook and getting their gifts and that, we're still monitoring the dog just to make sure that everything's fine, that the colour's good, that they're not overly fatigued, because obviously we are taking blood from them. Um, but yeah, we do stress to the owners, particularly our first time owners, we obviously may be a bit concerned that if they have any concerns at all, wait in the car, we'll come out and we'll check again afterwards, so after their first donation. And then once they've left the, the premises, they're more than welcome to contact their own vet um, if they have any concerns as well. So uh, it's the priority is the dog. And if we have any concerns at all during any part of the donation, we do obviously make sure that that dog is our utmost priority. Uh, another quite a few questions coming in now. How often can your dog donate? Uh, so it's every eight weeks. Um, so we tend to run sessions between eight and 12 weeks. Um, but maximum of six times a year. Six times a year, brilliant. Uh, let's see if we've got any other questions. One question that I have for you, for you, Sapphire. Um, obviously, um, we are working at different areas of this process. Um, with COVID, etc. As you've said, we are um, not allowing owners in to that donation just now, which we normally do as on your video. Um, are you seeing or hearing, obviously, over the phone much concern from owners about this process? Um, it's been very interesting from the very start of the pandemic, obviously, Pet Blood Bank, um, we knew that we had to continue the service. The demand was still there. Um, so vets, even though they were closed for routine things, they were still uh, obviously doing emergency uh, transfusions and things like that so we still needed to provide um, the, the units for that um, so what we did try initially was um, freezing um, the donation process for new donors and just working with our repeat confident happy donors where the owners felt really happy and confident themselves because they knew the process and they were quite happy for their dog to go through with the collection team and do it without them. Um, but then the demand grew more, so we needed to start enrolling. And we did that pretty soon on, I think from sort of June 2020, we started to get new donors um, enrolled. And this is the emphasis on needing the confident dogs that were happy, uh, which was a little bit of troubleshooting at times. So obviously with lockdown, people weren't socializing and like taking their dogs to like, training classes and things like that so it's finding that happy balance where we we needed the dogs to be confident happy to go through to the donation room without their owner and we've had about 100 new registrations every month since then um, of owners that are happy for their dogs to try and some have been fine some have been brilliant and they've made it and their donors and they've come three four times um since since lockdown started it last year um and some have tried it a couple of times and um collection teams have said you know what we think this dog would be better to the owners with with the owners there so we know once all the restrictions are lifted and owners can start coming back in again um that our sessions are going to be pretty busy um but the donors mm -hmm. have been absolutely brilliant and the owners as well so understanding 
you know, they know that it's an emergency service, if you like, it's, it's, it's needed um, 24 hours a day for us to be able to provide the service. And so just that massive amount of support has been amazing and kept us able this whole time to be able to supply emergency blood. Um, so very forever grateful for the owners that have thought, you know what, I think my dog can do this without me. Um, and generally, if, if your dog loves the vets, you know, the owners have said, oh, yeah, my dog thinks it's a day out. It's brilliant. So, you know, we're, we're more than happy to give it a go. And it's been yeah, really good. I can totally agree with that. Um, it, as a, a, the collection team, I've certainly found that so many dogs love coming to us. I mean, it's like humans going um, to, to give blood. It's not the easiest of things to do, but it's not painful. It's something that you do and then you get a tea and a biscuit at the end. Dogs literally can pull their owners towards us to come to a collection se session. And they're so happy and they're only on the table for five, 10 minutes and then they get lots and lots of treats. And it's so good that owners put their trust in us um, to take their dogs and have them for half an hour going through the process on the day and come out perfectly happy and we absolutely do appreciate everybody that's done that during lockdown and the past year and hopefully we'll welcome more people as you see now that restrictions are easing and we can get a lot more people in. Um, so brilliant, let's have a look for any more questions. How many doggy owners are there at the moment? Doggy donors, sorry. Donors, so active, um, we've yep. got about 5,000 now, um, but collectively we've had, uh, from, from the beginning of when the charity first started, we've had over 12,000 dogs register and donate wow. for us. Um, so obviously lots of those have retired yeah. since then, because uh, it started in 2007, mm -hmm. but yes, so 5,000 active is, is pretty good, um, yeah. and we just want to keep it growing, so more people that know about it, um, because we forever, when we're, we're doing the initial call and introducing ourselves to owners who have uh, found out about us um, through whatever whatever source, the, one of the first things they say is, I never knew dogs could give blood. And it's it's that always the same sort of thing. And it's like, yes, but I suppose you wouldn't really know unless your, you know, one of your dogs sadly might need something or a friend or, you know, so it's Absolutely. not always a nice experience of you finding out that dogs can give blood however you know this is the reason why we want people to really shout about it and word of mouth is important because it really does save lives um so the more Absolutely. that we spread the word and get lots more donors registered the better absolutely um, and following on from that can you suggest how we do spread that word yeah, so social media is a massive one. I mean, if you're savvy with social media and you can like our pages and share our posts, we've got a great marketing team that are always putting content on there um, and sharing all of the photos and things like that. Um, we've got leaflets. Um, if you did want to drop us a message, if you've got the facilities to be able to have leaflets out on display for us or hand them out to people, all you've got to do is uh, get in touch with us via the website, send us a message and we'll get leaflets posted out to you. Um, and when you're out and about walking your dog, if you are part of groups or it's quite a social thing when you're taking your dog out for a walk, make it a conversation. Um, obviously mm -hmm. making sure that the dog is big enough and everything like that but just and the great thing about our existing donors is is when they've got their bandanas on um, or they've got the lead mm -hmm. the lifesaver lead it's a real yeah. good conversational starter where you see somebody mm -hmm. like oh that's you know that's interesting tell me more about that so talking to people and just generally spreading the word is how you can do it for us Absolutely. And so again, so many of our donor owners have said at sessions, oh, yes, we always have their fifth um, donation lead on when they're out in the park. And so many people ask because it is bright and cheerful and very obvious what it's about. And uh, it, so, again, we're so grateful for our owners that do spread this word because they talk to friends. We have dogs. We then talk to other friends and the word just gets spread about so much. And it's fantastic. So it's we really appreciate that as well 
Um, we got another question here. I see you had the, on the video, we had the dog in lateral recumbency, which is on its side on the table. As a practice, we have them set up in a table for giving blood. Is there a best way for giving blood? Do you want to answer that one, Nikki? <laughs> <laughs> um, we do tend to do them on, in lateral as a whole, uh, but that does not to say that we don't do them when they're sitting up. I mean, we do have dogs like Great Danes, um, et cetera, who <laughs> I'm only a little person and some of our uh, donor assistants and phlebotomists as well are, aren't the greatest, biggest people in order to lift up 60, 70 kilo dogs. So yes, sometimes it is more comfortable for everybody to do it on the floor. Um, but when you think about it, it's actually comfier for the dog in general to be on its side on a nice comfy mat and during the summertime we have cool mats on that mat as well so we're cooling them down um but they're lying on their side and their head is just gently lifted obviously if they've got to sit on the floor um and have their head lifted up all the time in order to get into their jugular after five ten minutes that's going to be pretty uncomfortable for the dog so it's not necessarily a, a no-no that we do that but it's always an option there but it's comfier for everybody in order to do it um, on the side on the table and you need them on the table for the because it's gravity fed system isn't it the blood flows exactly. better yeah. down from the table into the bag um so that's why exactly. they're on the table because there's only so much dis yeah so much distance between the head and the bottom on the floor whereas they're up on the table as well they're much higher up um some of these bigger dogs when we have had them up um it's quite difficult to get the bag low enough but certainly it's it's so much easier for the blood flow and for the dog and for the phlebotomist and the donor assistants to do it while they're actually on their side on a comfy table we've had so many dogs actually fall asleep it's they're quite happy they're not in pain um it's quite comfortable we're not pinning them down um and as i say a lot of the dogs we've had snore they're quite happy the minute you hear the click of the bag knowing that, that, that it's at the end of the session oh waking up that's it we're all done um but yeah most of the time they're just quite happy to lie there you're quite happy to get a cuddle and get their blood and then they wake up and they've got lots and lots of treats and stuff like that as well so, and we do get lots of uh, questions from the owners when we're talking about the weight of their dog and some of our mm. big, big dogs. And they say, you know, you're not going to be able to lift that dog onto the table. But our collection team are absolutely mm. brilliant, really well trained, mm. um, do it all the ways to not injure themselves and give themselves a bad back. So exactly, absolutely yeah. like, don't worry if, if, they, if they need to get your dog onto the table to do it safely, then they'll get them on the table. Very well trained. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And that's where the owners can obviously help as well with, as you said in the, uh, the presentation, the training that they can do, things like teaching them to lie on their side, teach, teach them to be tickled around their neck. We advise things like uh, getting an electric toothbrush without the head on it, but uh, just the vibration part and putting it up against their neck is them getting used to having the clippers against their neck as well. Because a lot of dogs on the whole don't tend to get jugular samples taken a lot. So sometimes they don't um, even get to donation because they're so scared of the clippers. So again, um, owners can help us by making sure that they're getting used to the clipper noise by through this electric toothbrush lying down on their side. Um, going in and out the vets for happy visits. So they're not necessarily thinking the vets always going to be a, a scary place. Um, and as I say, a lot of owners are getting used to get dragged in or get dragged to the door because they're so happy. So I'll just see if there's any more questions. Like hypnosis, yeah, <laughs> it can be. Um, I've put the website again up into the chat box. So if you have any further questions or any want to get any information, um, you can go to petbloodbankuk.org and that'll give you all the information as well. Just check if there's any further questions before we finish. No, doesn't look like it. Anything else you'd like to finish on here, Sapphire? Uh, just to say thank you for everybody that's going to watch this video or joined us this evening and um, it really is a fantastic charity um, I know we're a bit biased because we do work for them but uh, even outside of that it's it's amazing and when you do hear stories about the recipients and what it does not just for the dog but for the owner um, 
who the dog is part of their family and if it can save their life even for a short space of time just to give them a bit longer it's absolutely amazing mm-hmm. what a donor can do um so it That's really cool. does save lives it really is a fantastic charity so any help and support um and the website is great take a look at the website have a look around and give us your support absolutely well, thank you very much for your time, Sapphire. Totally appreciate you coming along and telling us all about the owner side of Pet Blood Bank. Um, hopefully the, uh, this will entice some other doggy owners to have a look at the website and think about making their dog a lifesaver. Um, thank you very much, everybody, for joining. We've had numbers here and on Facebook, I see, which is just absolutely fantastic. Um, as you can, if you probably notice, I am sitting in the car. Uh, the things you do when you're a busy working mum, um, uh, taking children places. So it means that you have to do this in the car, sitting outside of an ice rink in the, the summer night of Scotland. But there you go, that's, that's life for you. So thank you very much, everybody, for coming along. Uh, we really appreciate all your support and please take a look at the website petbloodbankuk.org for information and thank you very much again. Thank you, Sapphire. Thank you.